Hi, so welcome to um, another YouTube video. Um, this one is going to be on energy density spectrum as well as power and energy signals. So first we're going to start with energy density spectrum and how that relates to energy. So if we have this sequence here, n equals 1, 2, 3, x of n is equal to 1, 1, 1. Uh, and then zero everywhere else. Let's just go ahead and graph that. So if we have x of n is equal to 1 at n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3, and then it's zero everywhere else, right, all the way back to negative infinity. So if we do a continuous time sequence, it would look something like that, right? With the straight line right there. All the way out to infinity and negative infinity. So that's our sequence. And what if we want to know the energy of our sequence? Okay, well, the first thing that we need to know is what's called the energy density spectrum. So energy density spectrum. Okay, and uh, the equation for that is phi sub x of omega is equal to the magnitude or absolute value of the DTFT of your sequence, or x e j omega, squared divided by pi. Okay, all right, so inside here is your DTFT. And these little bars represent magnitude or absolute value um, because we are dealing with complex numbers here in the DTFT. And the way that that relates to energy is if you integrate that, you have the integral from 0 to pi for, this is for real valued sequences um, using even symmetry. Omega d omega. And that's actually just your energy equation right there. So first what we need to do is find the energy density spectrum. And in order to evaluate that, the only thing we have to come up with is the DTFT. So let's go ahead and take the DTFT of our se uh, sequence right up here. So we move down, we have the DTFT, x e to the j omega is equal to the sum from n equals negative infinity to positive infinity of x sub n. Remember, that's little x of n, capital x of n. Square brackets means time domain, or discrete time domain. And uh, these curvy brackets mean continuous. or not, dis not They just mean discrete is square. Curvy means continuous. Times e to the negative j omega n. Okay, so if we have our sequence in view up here with our values of n and we can look one if you need to pause it and look at the graph for one more time you can um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and write it out we have x e to the j omega is equal to 1 times e to the negative j omega plus 1 times e to the negative 2 j omega plus 1 times e to negative 3 j omega, right? And these ones can just go away. So what we're left with is uh, these three terms right here. And now what we need to do is in order to get our phi, we need to, phi of omega, we have to get the, take the magnitude of our DTFT. In order to take the magnitude, we have Sorry, I was itching my eye. Take the magnitude of this. We essentially have uh, three terms here. 
So these are three each complex exponentials representing a cosine wave and a sine wave. Okay, the way you take the magnitude of a complex exponential, mag of complex exponential, is you have the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. That's for a complex number. Complex exponential is, well, by Euler's formula, e to the j omega equals cosine omega plus j sine omega, right? Where the imaginary part is sine omega and the real part is cosine omega. So then what we're left with is we have cosine squared omega plus sine squared omega, right? And the square root of that, well, from trig, we know that that's just one, right? Cosine squared of anything plus sine squared of that same thing is just one. Square root of one is one. So the magnitude of any complex exponential, no matter what's in this, uh, no matter what's up here, as long as there's a j, uh, let's, if it's negative 2, if it's negative 500, right, it's going to be 1. Um, that, that, and that goes for all complex exponentials that have a, a 1 in front of them, right? If they have like a, a 3 or something like that, um, you'd have 3 cosine omega plus 3j sine omega, and that squared is going to give you um, something else because I guess you could factor out the 3 and um, well yeah you just you just get something else so if we take the magnitude of all of these um, exponentials we just have that the magnitude of x e j omega is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 right which is equal to 3. Now we need to square it to find the numerator in our equation for 5 omega. Square it, 3 squared equals 9. Okay, sweet. So we got that. Now if we go back up to our energy equation, we see that all we have to do is integrate that into from zero to pi uh, with respect to omega. So I'm gonna move to a different sheet here. Let's make sure I'm still in focus. And um, I think it's in focus, yeah. So if we have the integral from zero to pi, and this is gonna be our equation for the energy of phi omega d omega, that is the integral from 0 to pi of 9 over pi, oops, and I totally forgot to divide by pi over here, because in our phi omega equation, we have this pi in the denominator, right, so don't, don't forget that, d omega, and that's a pretty easy integral, it's just 9 omega over pi plus c, right? But the c, the constants are going to cancel out when we evaluate it from 0 to pi, which gives us 9 pi over, not 9, 9 pi over pi minus 9 times 0 over pi, right? That's just 0. The pi's cancel here, and you're not taking away anything because you're taking away 0. So that goes away, and you're just left with that the energy of our sequence, x of n, is equal to 9, and I'm just going to put units here because your units can really vary depending on what the units of your signal are, and uh, that is our answer. Now, there's two, um, there's two types of signals known as uh, energy signals and power signals, and how you can tell the difference between them, or well, one difference, is that um, 
energy signals, they're going to have uh, energy that is less than infinity or finite, right? Uh, whereas power signals, their energy is going to be infinite. Infinite. Okay, so that's the difference between energy and power signals. So our sequence, our x sub n, that we put here, well, since that had finite energy, right, we just determined that the energy is 9. It's an energy signal, okay? So this right here, x sub n, energy signal. So what type of signal is going to be a power signal? What type of signal is going to have infinite energy? Well, if we go to look at the energy density spectrum, that's where we can see how something can have infinite energy, right? And if we integrate the energy density spectrum to get the energy, the energy itself, then we would have to have the integral uh, be infinite, right? So we'd have to have if energy is infinite, then we would have to have the integral be infinite, right? Which would mean that, or everything inside the integral be infinite, because infinite energy means infinite area under the curve, under this curve right here, which means that phi x omega needs to be infinite. Okay, so what um, if we go back to our phi equation up here, what um, pi isn't going to have any effect on infinite on infinity? Neither is this neither is this uh, squared, um, and uh, neither is this absolute value um, because or the the magnitude because my brain is farting right now sorry um but what we do have control over is or what we can look at is this um dtft term and see where is the dtft of something infinite and for that we have to go all the way back to the definition of the dtft if we have infinite terms in this dtft equation when we take the magnitude or absolute value of that equation, we're going to get an infinite amount of ones, right? So it's going to be one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, plus one, plus one. Um, and that's assuming that they all have a, a one in front of them. So let's let's just look at something uh, such as the the unit the unit step function, right? So that's a piecewise function, and it's one for all x greater than or equal to zero and zero for all sorry n not x n less than zero okay and if n is going from negative infinity to positive infinity obviously where it's zero it's going to cancel but once it gets above zero well then you're just going to have an infinite amount of one terms which is going to result in one times e to the negative j omega n an infinite amount of times which when you take the magnitude of the it's just like we said the trig identity it's going to be one plus 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 one, plus one, plus one. square it infinity squared is still infinity when you integrate that that's going to be infinity because if you integrate infinity, the area under that curve is infinity, and that's what an integral is. So that's where you'd have infinite energy. So a power signal is something that's going to go on forever. It has no period. Um, and maybe I'm not really defining that right. Uh, what I mean to say is that it's not absolutely integrable over negative infinity less than or equal to n is less than or equal to infinity, right? So if we're looking at n 
across the spectrum from negative infinity to infinity. If it's not absolutely integral, um, it might not have a period, and that's going to be a power signal. If it is absolutely integrable, so if it's got a some sort of like like what we see here, right? This goes up and then it goes back down to zero, right? And it doesn't repeat. Okay, so this one doesn't have a period. So that's a bad statement. Just just pay attention to this that one right there. Then it's going to be something like an energy signal. So those things, examples of that are just going to be like pulses, um, like a delta function, right? That doesn't delta function doesn't repeat itself, and it's absolutely integral, um, integrable. I don't know, is that even a word? Um, things like decaying. Uh, exponentials right so something that comes up and then it comes down um, and assuming that it's causal meaning that there's no um, when uh, n is less than zero x then is equal to zero, right? That's the definition of causality. So something like this where it's an exponential pulse and it goes eventually, just goes back down to, to uh, zero. So hope that uh, clears things up a little bit for you. I'm probably wrong on a lot of this. Um, I just make these videos to help myself learn. And I know I'm making a lot of mistakes. This is just the best way I could explain it in my head. If you have any comments you'd like to add or corrections or constructive criticism, um, I would love to hear it in the comments. And uh, if you want to subscribe, that would be awesome. So thanks for watching. Bye.